There's been a lot of discussion about the ultimate responsibility of government at national and sub-national level to move this agenda, but absolutely government's not on its own. All of us have uh, a role to play. And represented today on the panel, I think, are some of the absolute key partners for our government partners and for our country partners. We have organizations that do agriculture development for uh, uh, increased yields, and they don't care about nutrition, right? So uh, we are working about, uh, talking about nutrition. We want to make sure people are eating right, but those farmers are the ones who are still needing to, to increase their yields. They're the same farmers who are, are dealing with uh, 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 post-harvest loss. They're dealing with so many things. Their children are the ones getting malaria. Those are the women who need birth control. We've broken down the people we're trying to serve into teeny tiny pieces. But if we convene, if we get together and build networks, then we can begin to look at the whole uh, farming, the whole woman, the whole child. So I wanted to highlight the role of bilateral agencies like DFID in promoting family-centered systems thinking across the life course. We shouldn't continue to work in silos. We shouldn't support interventions that run parallel to the existing systems, duplicating or undermining what's already there and not contributing to sustainability. We must make sure that what we are doing um, and especially how we're financing programs, both bilaterally and multilaterally, is not crystallizing some of these silos, but is really promoting that joined up systems thinking. Bilaterals like DFID should be championing systems thinkers and systems thinking. I want to encourage all of you in this room, so, that, so the word heroes was talked about earlier, um, so I want to encourage all of you to be heroes, to be champions, not just of early childhood development, which I know you already are, but of systems to deliver early childhood development. So evidence-based systems thinking across all of those sectors which are relevant to deliver um, really good quality early childhood development outcomes for all of Africa's children. Why don't the private philanthropies want to fund government directly? I think we, we, need to, we need to start from there. And in my view, and uh, thinking about CIF is uh, we, we, we try to uh, emulate uh, how corporate entities work, and given that our money comes from uh, the, corporate, the corporate world. And when, you, when uh, you're thinking in that way, then you're thinking about risk, you're thinking about return. Uh, and in this case, even if our return is not monetary, it's in terms of impact, how best do we get uh, our return on investment? And I think that is one of the things that has really uh, driven how we channel our funds. And education for us uh, is one of the pillars that is very important for our foundation because we believe that uh, being a successful corporate, uh, we are very, uh, we are responsible or, or we are expected to lead. And not only is it because we are expected but because we believe our next crop of engineers and workforce basically comes from our industry and therefore it is our duty to contribute to bringing the talent that will uh, be the best for the future of our corporate and even for Kenya. And not only is it because we are expected, but because we believe our next crop of engineers and workforce basically comes from our industry, and therefore it is our duty to contribute to bringing the talent that will uh, be the best for the future of our corporate and even for Kenya. We organize our work in a way that moves towards four functions. So analysis, accountability, advocacy and alignment. And we've heard it a little bit here is that we are not always in the right conversations at the right time to make sure that we are leveraging the resources in the best way we can. And, and so one of the concerns I have around the nurturing care framework sometimes is that we will start looking for funding around nurturing care and, and try and compete with other funding that is, is on a, available. And what I think we can do better and what we would like to help you do is help you make the case for how nurturing care fits with a nutrition agenda, an HIV agenda, a gender agenda, or many of the other agendas that do actually have resources available right now. And if we can find ways to help you articulate how nurturing care will help um, achieve these goals also, um, then that will help you with uh, 
working together um, to make sure that you are unified in how you are approaching your uh, financing opportunities and then also implementing programs that are much more. So when we talk about advocacy, for me a big goal would be that we look at how we bring our messages around nurturing care into existing advocacy campaigns like um, Every Child Alive from UNICEF or the Sun Movement and we find ways to bring this inside rather than bringing everybody over to, to another corner of the world. In Africa, there's no vacuum in terms of policy leadership. There's no vacuum in terms of awareness and commitment at the very highest level that the matters that we are discussing here, they, they are noted with every intention of doing the right thing at the very highest level because we keep talking about political will. What is the manifestation of that will? You know the vision of the African Union is uh, to do with integration, uh, to do with um, shared prosperity, and also, of course, peace and to, for Africa to take up its place in the global arena and it's, it's anchored in its people. So the aspirations of Agenda 2063 and the, the reason I, I want to mention them is um, so that you see it, they may not mention early childhood development. That is not an aspiration. I was coming up with five things that are do or die for us in which one I would think for me is the prioritization about financing. So we have to call ourselves to something. So what are we saying about that first aspect? That we shall advocate for the prioritization of early childhood expenditure in national budgetary allocations at national and subnational levels. Yes, we must commit to work together because the nature of ECD is so uh, multi-sectoral. So we have got health, we have got social issues, we have education and everybody else. And we are committing to adopt a multi-sectoral interdisciplinary approach to the implementation of national policies and strategies that promote national coordination mechanisms. Today also is special because of the enthusiastic participation of 800 early childhood professionals from 47 countries in Africa that demonstrate clearly that Afghan is critically important to the future of children in Africa. Each of us is on a journey and our journeys have brought us together in this place, this day, this moment. And it's really incredible if you think about all the details and um, serendipitous conversations, hard actions that have brought us to this moment. It's very spectacular and it's important to recognize the power of being together. This past week has seen the following five key elements that are central to the early childhood agenda on this continent. First is the launch of the nurturing care framework. While building on existing practices, the framework compels all of us to consider what we must do to ensure that health, nutrition, education and protection systems, platforms and delivery mechanisms are better focused on supporting caregivers in giving their children the very best start in life. It provides an opportunity to renew our commitment to early childhood development, to be deliberate and intentional about what we will do to deliver on the sustainable development goals for young children. The Sustainable Development Goals are dependent on a robust early childhood development agenda and those relating to eradication of hunger, ensuring healthy and nutritious lives, providing quality education and protection for all, and achieving peace and justice are particularly at risk if we do not deliver for young children. It is time for decisive leadership 
and concrete actions to carry forward what we have planned and discussed. I thank you all for your commitment.